which is one of the dumbest arguments you can make. You know what? If I chop your arm off, I can guarantee that you lose weight. If I make you throw up after every meal, that I can make you lose weight. It doesn't mean that it's sustainable. It doesn't mean that it's healthy. Just because you lose weight doing something, it doesn't mean it's good. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be going through some terrible and often dangerous advice that I see with regard to health and fitness that gets spread over social media. But before I start, you guys know the drill. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, ding ding ding. And if you don't want to watch the entire video, I will be including timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead to the section that you want. Now onto the topic at hand. As most of you probably already know, there is some absolutely terrible nutrition advice and exercise advice being spread on social media. So I wanted to go over just some examples that I've seen over the last few weeks on my Facebook. These are all real examples. And one of the things that is very concerning is a lot of these pieces of information that are being spread are being shared by people who are calling themselves professionals. A lot of them are personal trainers and they are giving the absolute worst advice. This first one is absolutely ridiculous. Somebody was asking about raw eggs and should you consume them to build muscle? And this one person who is a personal trainer replied with, I ate 36 raw eggs a day for a couple months, put on a ton of muscle. The reason you put on a ton of muscle was because of your training, not because you ate raw eggs. First of all, when you consume raw eggs, the protein in the egg white is less bioavailable than cooked egg whites. So if you eat cooked egg whites as opposed to raw eggs, you are getting more protein. Your body is going to utilize more of the protein in the egg because it's more bioavailable once you cook the egg white. However, if you are consuming raw egg whites, you're essentially wasting most of the protein because it's not going to be as bioavailable and you're not going to build as much muscle. So if this person had actually cooked the eggs instead of eating raw egg whites, he would have been able to get the same benefits from eating less than 36 eggs because he would have had more usable protein in his body as opposed to the part that was wasted from eating raw egg whites. But that's the main takeaway. And aside from that, another note, this isn't 1976 and you're not Rocky, so stop drinking eggs. If you want to build up muscle, you're going to be better off doing cooked egg whites because the protein that is in the egg white is going to be more bioavailable once it is cooked. That is it for the whole egg thing. Another thing has to do with terrible supplementation advice. There was this one group, it's a personal training group, and this one personal trainer, he calls himself a personal trainer, but he's really a con artist just trying to sell Herbalife supplements. He was trying to convince people that they need to be on Herbalife. And on this particular thread, I ended up making the comment, don't waste your time with them. Multi-level marketing bullshit with ridiculous claims of curing diseases like cancer. And this is something that I actually have seen people from Herbalife do. They will make ridiculous health claims and I know that the company discourages it, but I still see a lot of them doing it and they do make a loophole so that they can get away with the claims that they make. And I'll get into that in a second. This person ended up responding with, absolutely not. The one thing you're told from day one is do not make medical claims. Yes, I realize that, but people break the rules that you set for them. So I said, they recently started doing that after several lawsuits. Now, they tell people to use examples of people that have been treated, but don't make health claims that it can treat. So for example, if I wanted to tell you that Herbalife is gonna cure your cancer, I can't flat out say that because if I say that, I'm making a medical claim and I could lose my license. However, if I wanted to trick you, what I can say is there have been a lot of people that have taken Herbalife that had cancer and now they're cancer, they don't have cancer anymore. You're technically not telling them that the Herbalife cured their cancer. You're saying that they had cancer, they took Herbalife and they don't have cancer now. So you're kind of conning them into kind of tricking them to saying that the two are related, but the two are not related. And that is something that a lot of people that do this multi-level marketing will do. They will take two unrelated instances, like somebody having a disease and somebody taking a supplement. And then if the person doesn't have the disease anymore, they will attribute their cure to the supplement when really it was other factors such as medications they were on or lifestyle changes that they've made or everything but the actual supplement that they took because the supplement had nothing to do with curing their disease. And I ended up also saying, which is basically trying to trick uneducated people into buying their products. And then I also said, not related to health claims, but there have been many of these types of studies related to negative health effects of their products. And it has to do with hepatotoxicity. So basically liver toxicity from taking Herbalife. I ended up going on PubMed and every single article on PubMed was either something related to liver toxicity from Herbalife or a retraction of the liver toxicity. So best case scenario, it doesn't cause liver toxicity if you are interested in taking Herbalife. Worst case scenario, you are going to get liver toxicity from it. So on the best case scenario, you're just not getting any benefits whatsoever, but you're also not damaging yourself. Does it sound like a great product to use? Yeah. 
But going back to the comments, this person replied with, this is also against company rules. Please forward any evidence, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't really care about forwarding that. And he also said, can you also share some of the positive health effects studies? Maybe the ones on PubMed. Why are you asking me to do your dirty work for you? If you want to find positive reviews, go look for them for yourself. I'm not going to cherry pick positive studies to try and help you sell more of your bullshit supplement. And by the way, when you go on sub on PubMed, there isn't one single positive reviews. As I stated, every single review on PubMed is either related to liver toxicity or a retraction of the liver toxicity articles that have been published earlier. So there are no positive reviews if you want me to find them for you. And I said as much, I ended up replying with, when I type Herbalife PubMed into Google, these are all the studies that show up in the first page. You can't really see it, but it's a laundry list of different types of studies from PubMed and every single one has to do with liver toxicity. So there are no good studies when it comes to the efficacy of Herbalife. And then I also supplied this from Healthline. It is a registered nutritionist take on Herbalife and if she thinks it's worth it. Spoiler alert, she doesn't think it's worth it. She thinks it's a big waste of money, the same as me. And he ended up replying with, did you read them? And I responded with, not right now, but I've read several of them in the past. I've been a professional coach for over 16 years. I coach professional athletes, Olympic athletes, and people with severe medical conditions. I'm not just some random guy on Facebook hating on Herbalife. I've dedicated my life to studying the human body and Herbalife is just a terrible company from a health standpoint. Their plans are not sustainable and they use cheap ingredients. If you're going to use supplements, I can name dozens of better and more reputable companies. To which he replied, so you'd be familiar, the Italian and Vietnamese Olympic team are fueled by Herbalife. Also, Cristiano Ronaldo, they've also done their research. And this is when I absolutely lost it on this guy because just because an athlete is endorsing a product, it doesn't mean it's good. Athletes will endorse whatever product is paying them to endorse that product. It doesn't mean that it's good. And I said that in this reply. I said, professional athletes are not nutritionists. They will consume whatever company is paying them to consume their product. UFC fighters are sponsored by Monster Energy Drink. Do you honestly think Monster Energy Drink is healthy? Half the NFL athletes will scarf down pizza and Coke after games, and many professional athletes are endorsed by McDonald's, Burger King, and Taco Bell, just to name a few. If your argument in favor of herbal life is, but professional athletes use it, then you need a new argument. You're essentially using an appeal to authority fallacy, only the authorities you're referencing have zero qualifications to be an authority on nutrition. And to top it off, I was just curious about Ronaldo's sponsorship deals after he said this, because I wanted to prove a point. So I went to his sponsorship page to see exactly how much he gets paid from each of his companies. And surprise, surprise, right underneath Herbalife, everything was listed in order of who pays him the most. So KFC also sponsors Ronaldo. And I ended up replying with KFC also sponsors Ronaldo. How much KFC do you think I need to consume to be at his level? And the funny thing is, Herbalife pays him 1.95 million and KFC pays him 1.7 million. And the fact that the two were just within one of another, that they were right after another, just made this extra funny because I wasn't even expecting to find that. I just wanted to see how much Herbalife was paying him. And the fact that KFC is also paying him and it happens to be right underneath Herbalife was just too perfect. And I had to post a screenshot of that to send to him. And of course, once I sent that screenshot, he did not reply. More misinformation that gets spread on social media a lot has to do with specific diets. A lot of people will say, oh, if you go on this diet, you can't gain fat. Or if you go on this diet, you're only gonna build muscle. And that's not true. You can gain fat on any diet. You can gain muscle on any diet. It depends on the training stimulus and it depends on whether or not you're in a caloric deficit. If you're in a caloric deficit and you have a good training program, you can burn fat and build muscle. If you are in a caloric surplus and you don't train, you're gonna build fat and burn muscle. That's gonna be true for any single diet. It doesn't matter if you're doing carnivore, keto, vegan, vegetarian, Mediterranean, paleo, pop tart a day diet, doesn't matter. Whatever diet you're on, if you're in a caloric deficit and you have a good training stimulus, you're gonna burn fat and build muscle. So, this one person ended up saying in this group, the World Carnivore Tribe, I, I ended up covering this yesterday in more detail, so I'm not gonna go over it too quickly, but he ended up saying, the main difference that matters real world is that if you gain weight on carnivore, it's mostly muscle, no. If you gain weight on carbs, it's mostly fat, no. Weight loss is the same. If you lose weight on carnivore, you lose mostly fat. No. And if you lose weight on carbs, it's mostly muscle. No. So don't look only the scale. Look the mirror. Look the holes on your belt. This is what matters. Low fat and more muscle. Now, I agree with the end of that. You shouldn't be hyper-focused on the scale unless it is your main objective to lose weight. You should go by based off of how you feel, how your clothes are fitting. That's going to be preferable to focusing on the scale. However, everything else that he said was exactly what I have a problem with. Everything that he said was completely wrong. 
Just because you put on weight on a carnivore diet, it doesn't mean that it's all going to magically be muscle. You can't just magically put on muscle just because you're following a carnivore diet. What if you're on the carnivore diet, but you end up sitting on the couch and doing nothing at all for an entire week? If you gain weight, did you gain muscle? Well, how the hell did you gain muscle if you didn't work out at all, if you were just laying on the couch? What if you are on a carb diet? If you are on a high carb diet, let's say you're a vegan and you do in strength, vigorous strength training and you are visibly leaner. You notice, oh, my abs are popping a little bit more. And wow, you know what? My biceps are getting a little bit bigger. Then clearly you put on muscle. You didn't just put on fat because you were following a vegan diet. You could put on muscle and you could burn fat on any diet. It doesn't matter what the diet is. Another thing with regard to misinformation on social media has to be the oversimplification of what exactly is entailed in weight loss. When it comes to weight loss, if you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose weight. There's no ways around that. But in terms of sustainable weight loss, there's more to it than just that. I ended up making a video debunking the myth that weight loss is 80% nutrition and 20% exercise. And I ended up posting that on a couple of groups just because I wanted to promote the video. And on that, I got some pushback and I got pushback from people that didn't even watch my video. They just had their own opinions from before and they ended up responding with this. Somebody said weight loss is 100% diet, to which I replied, while that's technically true, it's an incredible oversimplification it is what, in what is entailed in successful weight loss. That is key, successful weight loss, because anybody can lose weight temporarily. If you want to lose weight over the long run, that's going to take a little bit more work and effort. And if you're just focusing on nutrition, that's going to be a terrible strategy. You need other strategies in place. So he ended up replying with, don't eat for a month and I guarantee weight loss, which is one of the dumbest arguments you can make. You know what, if I chop your arm off, I can guarantee that you lose weight. If I make you throw up after every meal that I can make you lose weight, it doesn't mean that it's sustainable, it doesn't mean that it's healthy. Just because you lose weight doing something, it doesn't mean it's good. So the fact that you don't eat for a month, you are going to lose weight, doesn't mean anything. And I replied with, don't eat for a month, and I guarantee after that month is over, you'll go out on a binge, overeat, and eventually put on all the weight plus more. To which he replied, okay, try on eating for six months and I guarantee weight loss. Like. Why the hell did you even bring up that point? You already said don't eat for a month. Now you're telling me don't eat for six months? Well, if not eating for one month is gonna make you lose weight, then clearly not eating for six months is gonna make you lose weight, but it doesn't change the fact that it is not sustainable. Here's another thing. I made a video earlier last week on this topic, and when you do a prolonged fast, your body is gonna secrete the hormone ghrelin. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone. Whenever you are in a prolonged state of fast, or if you're under a lot of stress, ghrelin is going to be elevated, and ghrelin has been linked to poor decision making. Another thing that ghrelin does is it makes you crave high calorie dense foods. So if you do go on a six month fast, like this person just said, what's going to happen is ghrelin is going to be elevated, you are going to crave high calorie dense foods, and it is going to cause you to make poor food choices because ghrelin has been linked to poor decision making. So this is one of the dumbest arguments that he could have made. And I responded with, don't eat for one day and I guarantee weight loss. This video is about sustainable weight loss, not a quick fix. For sustainable weight loss, there's more to it than just nutrition. To which he replied, your headline says weight loss is 80% nutrition. It is technically wrong. First of all, that's not what my headline said. My headline said, fitness myth debunked. Weight loss is 80% nutrition, 20% exercise. So I didn't say that weight loss was 80% nutrition. The myth was that weight loss is 80% nutrition, 20% exercise, and that was the myth that I was debunking. So I did not say that weight loss was 80% nutrition. Anyway, he ended up saying, if somebody is in an induced coma for six months and you reduce their calorie intake for 800 calories, then they will lose weight with no exercise. To be healthy and strong requires exercise. Weight loss per se is 100% nutrition. And again, this is one of the dumbest arguments that you can make. Oh great, go on an induced coma for six months. Yeah, because that's really realistic. Everybody that wants to lose weight right now, you don't need to watch any of my videos. Just forget about everything that I said. Go on an induced coma for six months. You're gonna see great results, trust me. Anyway, I replied with, again, this is about sustainable weight loss. Anyone can lose weight by going on a calorie deficit. But to keep the weight off is much harder if you're solely focusing on calories and being in a deficit. Eventually, you'll put the weight back on, to which this person replied, if you are in a deficit, you will lose weight. If after cutting, you outweigh back on, absolutely nothing to do with exercise, which has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And I said, yes, I've already agreed with you on that point. Again, this is about sustainable weight loss. Where am I losing you? And that was the last of that conversation because this idiot never responded back. Now, another thing, this was the exact same video that I got a response on, but it was from another person. This person over here is a nutritionist. And again, the title was weight loss is 80% nutrition, 20% exercise. And it was a myth busting video. So I wasn't making that claim. I was debunking that claim to which this person replied without watching the video. I think nutrition is 70% exercise and 30% of fat loss plan. That's it. 
okay, you're completely missing the point. If you didn't watch the video, you overlooked 50% of the equation. I don't know why you bothered to comment on my videos if you're not gonna watch them. And I replied with, that's an oversimplification of fat loss. Nutrition is 25%, exercise is 25%, stress management is 25%, and sleep, rest, and recovery makes up the remaining 25%. To which he replied, I have to disagree with you, of course. Why would you agree with me when you haven't even taken a look at my video and listened to the content in there? It would be one thing if you watched the video, you disagreed with something, and then you made a valid point to disagree with what I was stating. But to disagree with something when you haven't even watched it and listened to my argument is stupid. And he said, I have helped people lose fat for 35 years. What does that have to do with anything? That is anecdotal evidence. I've helped people lose fat for 20 years. Just because you help people lose weight, it doesn't mean that you know what you're doing. I can make somebody lose weight again by having them throw up after every meal. It doesn't mean I know what I'm talking about. I can give somebody terrible advice and make them lose weight. I can give somebody great advice and make them lose weight. Just because you help people to lose weight, it doesn't mean that you know what you're talking about. And he said, a few people may have had stressful careers and not sleep well, but there is not much that a personal trainer can do about that. First of all, just because there's not much that somebody can do about that, it doesn't mean that it is not a component in sustainable weight loss. Just because you're not helping people with stress management and sleep, it doesn't mean that they're not doing those things on their own. And if they are doing those things on their own, it's going to make weight loss much easier. So just because you're not focusing on it with your clients, it doesn't mean they're not important. If I am a personal trainer and I train people, but I don't discuss nutrition with them, that doesn't mean that nutrition isn't important and they can get good results without me giving them nutrition advice. If I just train them, I work them out, they end up losing weight, it's because they did the nutrition on their own. So your point is invalid because just because you don't focus on stress and sleep with them, it doesn't mean that they don't have stress under control and that they have good sleep management on their own without you. Just because you don't incorporate it into your programs, it doesn't mean that they're not following it on their own. And I end up mentioning when it comes to stress that mental stress isn't the only type of stress. You have many different types of stress and physiologically your body is incapable of differentiating between these different stressors. It doesn't matter if you're stressed because of your career, if you're stressed because you're not eating well or stressed because you're overtraining. Basically, physiologically, your body responds to stress the same. It secretes the hormone cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone. When stress goes up, insulin goes up, which is, makes it easier to store fat. Testosterone goes down, which makes it harder to build muscle. And that is going to make it a lot harder over the long run to sustain your weight. So if it is your main objective to lose weight, then you want to control stress because stress is going to make it a lot easier to manage your weight over the long run. And then I end up getting another response on that same video. This is from a different person. This is somebody who is also a personal trainer and they ended up completely misinterpreting what exactly I was saying. They didn't watch my video and they said, that headline is misleading if for no other reason than it isn't just two factors. I never said it was two factors. You clearly did not watch the video and you clearly didn't even read the headline that says fitness myths debunked. I wasn't making the claim that those were the only two things. I was debunking that claim. And he said, sleep, stress, hormones, daily activity outside of the exercise, they all play major roles. They all play major roles, which is exactly what my point was. If you watched my video or if you saw the fitness myths, then you would realize that that was the point that I was making. They all play major roles outside of diet and exercise. So I, I replied with the video title or what I said in the post in terms of what was misleading. Not sure if you watched the video or it's coincidental, but I covered sleep and stress in the video. Hence the nutrition and exercise is only 50%. When I posted the video, I said, have you been told this myth? And then I finished it with nutrition and exercise is only 50% of the equation. So I don't understand how exactly this person misinterpreted my words when I blatantly said that there was more to weight loss than just nutrition and exercise. I literally said it's only 50% of the equation, which means there's two other things involved. But going on, hence the nutrition and exercise is only 50%. I stayed in the video that stress management and sleep, rest and recovery is the other 50%. This person ended up apologizing for misinterpreting it, so it wasn't a huge deal, but still, if you're going to criticize somebody, watch the video first, and then criticize them because otherwise you're gonna look like an idiot if you criticize them for something that they already said in the video. That's it for the part on calories. There's one last thing that I would like to cover and that is when people tend to conflate different issues. A few weeks ago I had made a video on dairy consumption and for me personally I have ulcerative colitis so I don't do well with cow dairy but I do well with water buffalo dairy, sheep dairy, and goat dairy and I had made a video explaining why those are preferable. Basically not all of them, but depending on the dairy source, it's going to have smaller fat globules, it's going to have more medium chain triglycerides, and it's going to have less lactose. And when you combine those three factors, it's going to make it more digestible. And for people that have lactose intolerance, it's going to make it beneficial. 
So I made a video explaining my personal preferences for dairy sources because I have lactose intolerance and that if you do have lactose intolerance, these may be viable options. However, I said in the video that just because they work for me, they may not work for you because some people will still have an adverse reaction. And then I got this reply over here on that video. Those of us with dairy intolerance still can't eat this stuff, to which I replied, depends on the individual. Infants with dairy intolerance were given goat milk and 93% of the infants had no adverse reaction to the goat milk. I myself can't consume dairy from cows, but I have no issue with these sources and many of my patients are the same way. It's not for everyone though. Certain people will still react poorly. I was very clear on those points. To which she replied, lactose intolerance and a protein reaction are completely different processes. Yeah, I understand that. You're not telling me anything I don't know. So I said, yes. Protein reaction is an allergy, which is discussed in the video. If you have a protein reaction, you shouldn't be consuming any of these. And then she said, that's what I said. No, you didn't say that. You said dairy intolerance. To which I replied, yes, but that's irrelevant to the video. The video is specifically for people with lactose intolerance, not an allergy. And then she said, the video is irrelevant to those with a dairy intolerance. She keeps conflating dairy intolerance with an allergy, a milk allergy. The two are completely different. You can still consume dairy if you have a lactose intolerance, if there's very, very low levels of lactose. Some people can still consume it. If you have an allergy, your body is not going to be able to process it and you are going to have an anaphylactic shock or some type of allergic reaction. The two are completely different and this person is conflating the two different issues. To which I replied, an intolerance and an allergy are completely different. A lot of people with lactose intolerance can still consume low lactose dairy products without any adverse reactions. The same cannot be said for an allergy to dairy. And then she said, that was my point. No, that wasn't your point. Your point was that you have a dairy intolerance and you can't consume dairy. My point was you are conflating a dairy intolerance with a dairy allergy. An allergy to dairy and daily dairy intolerance are two completely different things. And I said, I understand that, but that wasn't the point of the video. The video is specifically for people with lactose intolerance, not an allergy to dairy. That was also discussed in the video. And she said, you must be a bot. Yes, I must be a bot because I am responding to the questions that you are asking or the comments that you're making. If I was a bot, I would just have generic responses. I wouldn't be responding to you. So that's one thing. And then my final reply was, did you even watch the video? I literally say in the video, this is only true for certain people with lactose intolerance. If you have an allergy to dairy, you should not be consuming any dairy at all. I literally said that in the video and she was completely conflating a lactose intolerance with an allergy to dairy. Those are just a few examples of people that are just giving terrible information or just don't know what they're talking about on social media. So whenever you do get information regard to health or fitness on social media, be very careful with who you listen to because a lot of people are spreading misinformation and if you believe that misinformation, it is going to have some negative consequences. That's pretty much it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I don't make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you again tomorrow.